Welcome, Texas Gunsmith here. Today we're doing a first impressions with the Century Arms C39 V2 Magpul fixed stock version. The very first thing I noticed was the barrel. And the barrel is thick. Uh, thicker than normal AKs, I would say. If it's not exactly a Type 3 spec barrel, it's a lot closer. Uh, the barrel's heavier, and I was interested in that because I thought there's a chance maybe if the barrel is, is machined right, and with the heavy barrel that way, it could handle heat maybe a little bit better and also maybe improve accuracy. Uh, from a lot of what I've read and seen in videos, uh, you know, people are saying it has a green mountain barrel and it very well may. Now, I wrote an email to Green Mountain and I asked, is there barrels in the new Century C39 V2s? And they responded and they neither confirmed nor denied. What they said was uh, that the barrels in Century Arms C39 V2 is proprietary. And those barrels could only be purchased through Century Arms and any specs or other information you would have to get through Century Arms. Now, they didn't say they weren't making it, but they wouldn't give me any information. Now, I also have an email in the Century Arms asking about some of the specs, and I have yet to hear back. So, it's only been a couple of days, but... Uh, We'll see what, what information we get back. One thing we do know, and I'll show you from uh, here. This is our little manual that came with the, with the gun. And it says, barrel 4140, chrome molly, nitride treated for durability. All right, and we have the other specs there. And this is about almost as good as this manual gets. It's about 10 pages of warnings and telling you why guns are dangerous and about, you know, a paragraph of specs on the guns. So, and their website's not much better either as far as getting information. Uh, my main question was, is it really nitrated inside and out? Because I... I happen to know Green Mountain Barrels a little bit. I've been researching for building my own AKs, and I had to research their barrels. For milled AKs, they, uh, the barrel they have available is AK47-7GM, and that's listed as 1960 Polish. Uh, and that's supposed to be the barrel for the milled AKs. And on their website, uh, it shows that barrel made out of 4140 chrome lined but parkerized finish now all the advertisement i've seen on a c39 claims nitride now is the nitride just external internal what i you know i don't know Uh, I will probably do a more in-depth comparison of these two rifles uh, in the future. Uh, not really my intention to do right now, but I did want to show you the barrel thickness, uh, which is what drew me to this. On the Arsenal barrel, between the gas block and the front sight, about .584 of an inch. And on the century, six forty, six forty five. I've I've measured at different times where I got was getting like six twenty five, but I'm at least forty thousandths thicker between the gas block and the front sight. And it continues after the uh, gas block, between the gas block and the receiver. 
on Arsenal were like 620 and <clears throat> 684 so we're good I would say probably I, I've been measuring about an average of 40 thousandths thicker uh, between the gas block and the front sight and maybe 60 thousandths thicker between the gas block and the receiver. I hadn't thought I was going to get uh, one of the V2s uh, mainly because you can see the lack of a side rail. Uh, to me... I, I thought me, even though the gun has a lot of good reviews, the lack of the side rail, maybe I'll just wait until V3 comes out and, and maybe that'll have a side rail. Uh, I, I really thought that was a monstrous fail on Century's part by not putting a side rail on there. In my mind, one of the, the biggest concerns for the C39 V2 is being able to add a side rail for an optics mount. Now, there are many available uh, from different manufacturers and things like that. There's also different lengths, so you, you might want to check into that if you're going to do it. Uh, I think it's the 74 is longer, uh, and that ain't going to work on this one. You're going to need definitely uh, the 47 style. Uh, you need to drill three holes and add rivets. Not so easy for you know the common guy i think uh, there is one from utg available where you can um, drill and either thread the holes or add nuts i think they send their package with nuts uh, I, i'm not sure that i'm in love with that uh, for me one of the largest concerns is the forward hole because it falls to the magwell so you can't just plow through and add a rivet uh, there needs to be a slot on the inside to allow the rivet to be smashed down. Uh, and we have our Arsenal SAM 7R here. And you can see we have the magwell and the rivet here. Uh, I'll end up pausing for a second just so I can drop the mag, flip it over, and I'll show you the slot that's machined on the inside of the reef inside of the receiver so you can have an idea all right as we look inside the receiver you can see the rivet i hope and you can see the inside of the receiver is machined down a little bit to allow the uh, rivet to be squished down so you got to have that for the magazine to be able to fit right that rivet's got to be mashed down so that it's flush with uh, the, the higher portion there inside of the receiver. So we could see the Arsenal rifle has a, a pretty large mach machined out notch there. And I'll show you, one second here, I'll show you the inside of the C39. All right, we're looking inside the C39 right now. And it does have a machined out notch. And it will be in the area of where you need to put that rivet. But I can tell you the notch is smaller. So you're going to, uh, my lighting ain't so great here. I'm trying to get it so you can see. But uh, the notch is smaller. But I think it will be serviceable for what we need to do. For those of you who might be interested. <clears throat> Here we got a little bit better light so you have an idea. See the notch is a little bit smaller where that rivet needs to go. Uh, so you know some care is going to be needed to hit right in the middle of it. But it will work for the rivet for that side mount. So that's, that's a major plus. Uh, a few features of this particular gun is it has a chevron muzzle brake very attractive I do like the brake I think it's really nice looking and uh, you're supposed to be able to attach a, a, a silencer or suppressor on there
no cleaning rod. Not capable of having a cleaning rod, nor a bayonet. Uh, not a huge problem for me. Uh, it takes a little bit of weight off by not having it, so I don't really mind too much. Uh, and I'm not a purist, so I know a lot of people get concerned of which angle the gas block, uh, the gas block is, and certain other features. Those things don't matter too much to me. I, I'm more about function and, and what works for me. Uh, we have Magpul furniture. So uh, the the hand guards seem uh, decent. There's metal lining on the inside, I guess, to keep from melting down the plastic. Uh, we'll take that apart and have a better look at it. And we have their MOE fixed stock, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, it has a little button here that when you pull to the rear, you can lift this off. I have to pause for a moment and show you. Hold on a second. So with that button, this comes off. And you can store your cleaning kit or maybe some other things down in there. That's pretty decent. Uh, we also have a Magpul pistol grip. Uh, it's larger than the regular Com Block pistol grip, which I like. Um, and it's reasonably comfortable, though it is hard plastic feeling. Uh, I will probably change that to a Hogue grip. Uh, our mag release here is uh, somewhat extent, got extended tangs out on each side. It works nice. It feels okay. Uh, I can't say I'm a huge fan of it. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not used to it. I'm considering changing that to a standard mag release, but uh, it's okay. It works. Um, it, we have nitride finish on the receiver, and that is pretty nice. It's nice and smooth things like that it seems the machine work seems very nice on this side uh, we have our safety lever that has the bolt hold open uh, slot in it uh, I, I don't really like that too much I'll probably change that out and our sights are okay they're pretty decent nothing too fancy or different or weird our Gas tube uh, is vented on a gas tube instead of on the gas block. Um, overall, the, the gun feels nice. I'd say it feels a touch heavier in the front with the barrel being thicker. Uh, and, and milled AKs are a touch heavy anyway. I'd say this is probably a touch heavier in the front uh, than something like the Arsenal milled AKs. Uh, well... I'm going to uh, open it up and we'll have a peek inside here. Uh, one thing I can tell you, it's in serious needle lube. Uh, this gun, uh, it, when working the action right now, I mean, this is brand new out of the box. It's, it's kind of dry, so it, you don't have that real nice feeling like, uh, like you do after a gun's lubed up or whatever. Uh, it's definitely going to need to be lubed up. It's not quite as smooth as it should be yet. But I think that's just the lack of lube. Looks like they just put everything together really dry. Uh, the bolt carrier. Big difference than normal AKs is we have uh, uh, lightning cuts in here. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, I'm sure it reduces weight. I think I, I heard something that it's supposed to help with recoil. I, I don't know about that, but uh, will it hold up over time? I'm not sure. The one thing I noticed is there's a line running down, so I'm not sure if this is a cast part or not, but we have a line running down it that would make me think it may be cast versus machined. Um, I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll, this is a replaceable part in my opinion. Of course, headspace would have to be checked or whatever, but, uh, if it comes to it and I don't like it enough, uh, I'll change it out to a more normal bolt carrier. Pistons, nothing special. Um, our bolt... Uh, it is a floating uh, firing pin in here, not spring-loaded like the Arsenal bolts. 
can tell you that. I do like the spring-loaded fire and pins. Uh, they tend to be pretty beefy and uh, uh, I, I like this the spring coming out the back a little bit. So, a recoil spring. It's supposed to be a wolf spring uh, and inside. Uh, not the twisted springs that you see on the typical AKs. Again, these are wolf springs, is my understanding. Uh, it is a double hook trigger. Uh, one thing I do like, this is uh, Century's new proprietary trigger, I believe. And the hammer is nice and rounded. So that's going to help with the action. Uh, you know, typically uh, I would take a G2 trigger and, and round it down myself and get it smoothed out. Uh, this one, I already rounded and looks pretty good. Uh, I haven't taken a measurement on the pull weight of the trigger yet. I ought to do that and uh, we'll see what that is. Uh, it does have a little bit of a wall right before the trigger breaks if you like that. We'll pause for a moment. Sorry, I don't have a camera operator here with me, so kind of managing everything by myself. I just reassembled and, and did a trigger pull test that came in at about three and a half pounds with, uh, with my gauge. One thing to keep in mind, particularly with a milled, is you don't want to let the hammer slam down uh, with the bolt carrier out because you could... Uh, damage the uh, uh, ejector there so you want to lower that carefully down instead of just pulling the trigger and letting the hammer fly uh, we'll go ahead and uh, pull our gas tube out all right we got our gas tube out here uh, nothing too spectacular it does fit in there nice uh, nothing too weird or different one of the uh, sales points with this rifle is it's supposed to be able to take AKM furniture. <clears throat> uh, we'll pull the lower hand guard off and, and have a look inside to where furniture might attach inside the receiver down in here. Uh, and, and see how that does. One thing I can tell you, it is a little bit different than your typical milled AKs. You can see we're square cut here, and our arsenal is angle cut, and you can see our stock adapter is compensating for that because it's angled to make it square. So I do know that's right, and in doing some pre-checks, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to use every... AKM style stock uh, because it's still not a stamped gun. I think you're going to be relegated to using uh, <clears throat> either wood furniture or Magpul furniture. I do think, uh, you know, like the Zukov stock and this MOE stock will work, but you're not going to be able to just put every kind of stock adapter in here. I already know that. Um, like this style Kinesis adapter is not going to be able to slide all the way in to get underneath the uh, pistol grip nut uh, because it's just how it's machined. So you have an open spot inside that comes to about here and, and then the, the uh, metal inside, <clears throat> the way it's machined is, is thicker. You're not going to be able to come all the way through. That's something I do know. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, pull our lower guard off. To do that, we just need to raise the lock here. Move that out of the way. And then pull down on the front and slip it out. <clears throat> I know this furniture is a little bit tight, so I need to pause for a moment. And here we have the inside of the hand guard. We have... Uh, like a thin metal heat shield inside the plastic hand guard there. <clears throat> As we come around and look inside the receiver here, you, you have a certain amount of room to catch the ledge, which a, a lot of 
the hand guards use is, is something along that line to get in there. So the machine work on this uh, looks pretty nice. I'd say uh, I like the way a lot of it looks. The rivets look nice and uh, the machine work looks uh, pretty well done. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, I do think that this gun may be a little bit of an oddity and that you're not going to be able to just use any AK furniture. You might have to do some fitment or other things like that. Um, I'm going to pause for a moment and we'll pull off the rear stock. Alright, the rear stock is held on by basically three screws. We have one here, here. And one down inside that we started loosening already. That one's a whole lot of fun to try and get out just because of the angle. But uh, we need to get those three screws out. And the stock is really tight in the receiver. So you gotta kind of work it to get it out. We'll pause for a second while I get it out. Alright, one thing to note. Uh, the three screws that are holding the stock. Uh, the nuts are not captured. They, they slide into the slots and can move around, so you're going to have to orient them as you get it apart. The bottom one, you do not have to take all the way out. If you just loosen it up, it allows this front piece to slide down and catch. So you can make some adjustments or do something with that, but you do not have to remove that one all the way. Now, as we look in the back... Uh, single tang, unlike the double tangs on uh, most milled receivers. And you can see the machine work inside, that we have that circle in the middle. So you're not going to be able to use a kinese or an ace stamped adapter like you would on a stamped AK because those require you to slide forward to the pistol grip nut. Uh, and obviously we're blocked. Uh, I'm not saying you can't use them entirely, but at the very least you're going to have to do some uh, trimming and fitting to get anything like that to work. So you do have a, a pretty decent amount of room to work with there, though. So if we take a, a look down this side, we also have this ledge here, which... Uh, you might be able to do something with if you needed to drill a hole or do some fitment down in there along that line. But uh, definitely a little bit of a different setup. So, at any rate, this is what we look like uh, mostly stripped down. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to get the pieces put back together and uh, we'll be back in a moment.